say, and you know, leave out we don't want to say. But Paul, where were you born and raised? Uh, actually, I'm born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I first came up to Seattle about 10 years ago because I heard it was a nice place to live. And Seattle is very, uh, very given uh, city to live in. You get a lot of help here. Oh, nice. And Tell me about Louisiana. What was your home life like? Uh, Louisiana is very, it's very different. It's kind of a very touristy city. Uh, there's really a lot of nice people there. A lot of people have a misconception of New Orleans as being a dangerous city. That's not, it's not true. It's like anywhere you go, you might have a yes, bad sir. neighborhood. But the majority, most of the people are really friendly. Actually, I had went down there to, to uh, uh, visit some family members a couple months ago. And everybody was super nice to me. Were you, were you raised in New Orleans? Yeah, I was raised in New Orleans. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a very, yeah, the food there is like really good. It's the best food in the world. I don't know if you've ever been down there. That's what I hear. I have not been yet. Yeah, if you definitely haven't been there, you have to go there and check out the food. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to check out the food and music, too. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, yeah. They have uh, this thing called Jazz Fest. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's where everybody comes and they play music, and it's a big, big feast. It's really, really pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about, you know, we you were raised with your mom and dad. Yeah. You know, go back. If you can go back in your memory and think about our brothers and sisters. Yeah, I have uh, one brother and one sister. Uh, I really don't uh, communicate with uh, anymore. Uh, my sister got kind of bad off on drugs, so uh, I haven't talked to her in 20 years, and oh, when wow. I talked to her not too recently, it's like it's not even talking to the same person. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. I guess she's on meth or something. It's it's uh, her brain's is, is totally gone. Yeah. Well, where where is she? She's back. Well, there. actually, no. She's in uh, Ocean Shores. Okay. And uh, my my parents passed away, and uh, they left me some life insurance money, and she went and forged it and stole it. It's like a hundred thousand. So right now, I'm trying to get. Uh, State Farm Life Insurance to pay me the claim. They finally admitted that I was the beneficiary. So until then, you know, I'm gonna be like, you know, flying a sign and you know, you know try to just get by. Yeah. Because I have a uh, stage four cancer now, so I can't can't uh, you know work eight hour periods. And yeah. I used to work as a pipe welder, and yeah. I can't do that anymore because the company won't won't cover me with the insurance. Yeah, yeah. Do you go to like a trade school? Well, I, actually, I went to a Portland Community College and I got an associate degree in pipe welding. Oh, nice. And then I also I worked, uh, I worked at the Louis, uh, in Louisiana as a welder and also I worked in Australia for the Department of, the Australian Department of Defense. I worked as a welder over there. It was, it was really good. I liked it. You say Australia? Yeah, Australia. Oh, nice. I have a ex-girlfriend that lived there and I went over there and I stayed about six months. It's uh, really different. It's uh, very different than the United States. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. I, I, I've never been, but I can only imagine. <laughs> well, you know, another thing, too, like about European countries, is they don't have the same compassion as they do, like, in Australia. It's like everything's very, like, superficial. you got to have a designer shirt, designer jeans, designer <laughs> shoes. It's just different. You know, the United States is very more laid back. Yeah, oh, well, that's good to know. Uh, tell me about... When you were kids, what did you guys do as siblings for fun, Louisiana? Oh, I had some. Uh, I have some cousins of mine. We were like in the same age group. You know, there's. Uh, I have one cousin, David, is the same age as my brother. I have a cousin, Timmy, he's the same age as me. We always get together on the weekends and, you know, run around and you know play out in the bayous and there's all kinds of stuff you can do down there. It's yeah. uh, you go fishing every day. Uh, there's a this uh, lake called Lake Pontchartrain. We'd go out there every day. And we do some traveling and stuff like that. Nice. It's nice. really it's, it's a different uh, environment. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I, I assume from Louisiana, you didn't come straight to Seattle. It was a journey. Or? Uh, no, I just, I just, you know, I caught the Greyhound and it came up here. Oh, nice. So what brought just, you? Like, why did you come to Seattle? Well, uh, Seattle was ranked one of the top cities to live in, and uh, yeah, yeah. like one of the top cities in the country to live in. So, yeah, yeah. so I come, I came and checked it out. Actually, I could have picked a better place. I mean, Seattle's been really, really good. Yeah. People are very open, you know, yeah, yeah. real friendly. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me about, a little bit ago, I asked if you've been unhoused. You said oh, yeah. yes. Tell me about that. How did that happen? Well, uh, when I first came up here, I didn't know anybody. So I was on the street, and then I had, uh, I was staying at a place called Ten City, and the, uh, the lady that was running it asked me, you know, to, if I would help her to open up these tiny house villages, and I told her I would. So we uh, went and spoke to the Port of Seattle, and uh, went and spoke to the city, and we opened up uh, uh, the first tiny house village. As a matter of fact, it's right here on 15th. Oh, nice. And it's been really good. Since we opened it up, and we had 
uh, a lot of uh, good reviews from the neighbors and the city. They opened up like 12 more. So now there's tiny house villages all over are all over uh, Seattle right and now. And how long ago was this? Uh, this was in 20, 2016. Yeah, 2016, 2017. And I've been in housing ever since uh, 2017. Oh, nice. Yeah, they, what it is is they start you out as a tiny house and then you move into one of their apartments and I've been there ever since. Gotcha. So right now it's probably about six years. Oh, gotcha. So out of curiosity, when you came to Seattle, you stepped off the Greyhound bus. Yeah. Did you know in your mind, tonight I got to sleep on the street. I need to like... Ha- well, actually, yeah, that's true. That's what happened. But I met these... Uh, two native people on the bus and they told me they're like hey man you know if you, you know if you need looking for some place to stay you know we know where to go uh-huh. as soon as i got off the bus i went to this place called night watch okay and what it is is you go in there at 10 o'clock at night and if you need any kind of housing they'll send you to a church or whatever okay, gotcha. so i actually got really lucky nice. and then i started working at the billionaire club and i got that that's like one of the, one of the reasons i came up with too because i seen the Millionaire club on, on, a, on some kind of tv show where they help you get a job they help you get into housing and uh, when I first came up here, man, they, they really took care of us. You know, we worked every day. The base, you know, most, most of the people we worked for were like millionaires that were retired from like Boeing, go out there and do landscaping and stuff. And they've been, the millionaire club used to be a really, really good, good organization. Like if you needed boots, you need anything like that, they would help you out with it. Whatever you needed for like any kind of like counseling or anything like that. Any, if you need coats, boots, whatever they have, they, they'd help you out, they'd give it to you. And so it's really been, they've really took care of me since I've been up here. Oh, nice. Yeah, I haven't worked there in years, but it's a good experience when I first came up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing about Seattle, you have a lot of good resources. Whereas Louisiana, you don't have any. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might give you a hot cup, you know, a cup of water, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, you're taking advantage of the resources yeah. from the city that they provide. Oh, yeah, other, definitely. Other nonprofits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The nonprofits in Seattle have been really good. Uh, except for Lehigh, it's kind of like they take advantage of the homeless people. What they do is they get all this federal funding and they turn around and they buy real estate. They buy, you know, all these apartment buildings. And then they don't take and put people in these apartment buildings right away because they own it. You know what I mean? It's like they buy the building and then they turn around and they, they, they sell it out to the, uh, the feds. Huh. So it's kind of like a money scam, you know, if you really want to look at the big picture of it. And I know Lehigh really well because I worked with them to get to get, yeah. to get the uh, tiny house village open. Really, what it was is they had nothing to do with the tiny house being being open. They had a counselor that was just like taking in, you know, people that were coming in. And then what happened was Moshe was running it, Michelle Michonne, and she did some shady stuff, and we had to remove her. And once we removed her, that's when Lehigh stepped in and took credit for a camp that we built. You know, they had no involvement in it whatsoever. So now, because of that camp, they got like two hundred million dollars a year for for donations and and federal grants, and they just go around and they buy all these apartment buildings up. If you look up Lehigh, it's called Low Income Housing Institute. They have like over 400, 400 uh, apartment buildings that they own all over the United States, gotcha. especially like in New Orleans area. I mean, uh, Seattle area, and they just rent them out. They rent out their apartments. Like a lot of these apartments are empty. Yeah, There's not even nobody staying in them. Like uh, the last apartment I had, the, my neighbor was gone. He moved out two years ago, and that apartment's been empty all this whole time. So where? So you have your house now? I'm housed, yes. Great. And you've been housed since 2017, you said? Yes, yeah, since 17. So it's been like maybe six years straight. Oh, gotcha. But uh, when I was going to, to college in uh, Oregon, I had an apartment down there for like five five years straight. Mm. And uh, Oregon, you don't have as you know as much help as you do here. Whereas here, you have a lot of help. Down there, you don't have any. Gotcha. This, there's a lot more resources in Seattle. Right, 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 right. Uh, is there anything that you'd want the people of Seattle to know? Don't give money to Lehigh. Low income housing, they are terrible. They're just going to take that money and they're going to spend it on themselves and they're going to buy apartment buildings and not put anybody in it. You know, don't give no money to Lehigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I to gotta figure out what I'm going to do with this video. <laughs> Well, it's true. I mean, you want me to be honest? I mean, I do want you to be honest. Yes. I mean, I know specifically what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is about you. It's, a, it's your story. You say what you want to say. <laughs> yeah, but do not give them money to Lehigh. <laughs> yeah, they're using these. They, what are they, they're financially exploiting these people. Using these people, putting them out there. It's like if you notice, you know, in the in the summer months when you see all these like ships come in 
you don't see a lot of homeless people downtown. But when you come by and you see when they get ready to come up for a federal grant, all of a sudden there's tents all over Third Avenue. Hmm. And that's Lehigh putting all these people out to make the situation seem like it's worse than what it really are, is. Are you alluding to, you think it's a conspiracy? Oh yeah, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. I, I, I know Sharon Lee, I know Brad, I know Josh, I know everybody at Lehigh that's higher up, that high behind the, the, the screen. And they just, I mean, it's a, do not give them no money. <laughs> you know? Good to know, good to know, Paul. Well, I, thank you for your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to use it or not, but it, it's just, it's the truth, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, I've been in that situation, uh, and it makes me mad when they, when they sit there and use it, especially when I mean, we built that camp, you know? It, it was, you know, me, Michelle, Michonne, we literally built it, you know, we're getting the city to approve it, getting the port to approve it. You can check out and go online and check it out yourself. I spoke to the city, I spoke to the uh, port, got them approved, spoke to the neighbors, I spoke to everybody I could speak to to try to get it approved. And what happened was my mom ended up passing away and I, uh, we were building the camp and I wanted to build a rose garden in her memory. So we put rose gardens all over the, the camp and that made it seem like it wasn't a homeless camp. It made it seem like a real different environment. Park. Yeah, and it was real good. I mean, it, I have, you know, pictures of it and stuff I can, I can show you, but uh, it's real good therapy for people that were going through stress like that to go work out and, you know, work in the garden and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it's, it helps your mind. Dirt, right, right, right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I definitely recommend uh, Seattle, you know, it's, it's really good. They have a lot of really good people. Yeah, right on, man. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. All right, Paul. <laughs> let, me, let me grab that little mic around you. I hope I didn't share with Lehigh, but it's the truth. I just don't want... They get like $200 million a year. And it's just a, you know, buy their apartment buildings. If Lehigh is listening, give that to some Seattle stories here. <laughs>